Hi, hello, how are you? Glad you're here. Today, this video, we are going to talk all things about fat gain and carbs because there's a lot of confusing information out there. But before we get into the video and I drink the rest of this delicious coffee, I want to remind you to make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. If you're not already, go ahead, click that button. And look, click the other link that's down there and get on my email list because I'll send you my ultimate fat loss guide with all my best tips and tricks to help you lose weight and not have to worry about it ever again. I won't spam you. I only send you my best content and maybe it's like once or twice a month. Pretty minimal. Just drink this coffee and get into it. Want some coffee? No, doesn't seem like a good idea. Okay. If you eat too many carbs, will it cause you to gain weight? This is a big question. It's something that's talked about all the time. It drives me insane. So I'm going to try to explain this as best I can so that you can go and enjoy all the carbs in the world and understand that carbs and one single macronutrient alone will not make you gain weight. Okay, okay. So you'll notice that there's one through five. Do not skip to the answer. Do not go right to the end because you're gonna miss out on all the reasoning for that answer and you're gonna be a dick. So don't jump ahead. So number one, we have to look at the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity. This is what folks who believe in low carb diets and things like the ketogenic diet believe are true. And that is the theory that if we have a lower carbohydrate, higher fat, higher protein diet, you will burn more calories throughout the day, right? You will burn more because technically they believe you'll use fat as fuel and fat has more calories per gram. One gram of fat has nine calories. So we can look at it that way. If you are ingesting carbohydrates, it automatically gets turned to fat. You only get fat if your body has stored fat. They completely ignore the idea of the calories in versus calorie out model of things. Or a little bit further, the only way we can actually recognize if any of this could be true is human trials, like looking at this and seeing if it actually happens in the human body. And we can't go based off anecdote. We can't go based off rodent studies because we're humans and our body works differently. They did uh, studies in what's called a ward study or a metabolic ward. When everyone is kept in a single space, with it, which would be a science lab, the food that they are eating is predetermined and measured out and controlled by the scientists. So they're not, you know, choosing random things, not eating specific things, right? No, everything is controlled down to a T from the amount of sleep they're doing, from the exercise, like everything is within their control. So no one is self-reporting, which takes a lot of error out of these um, experiments. And two that they did found something pretty interesting. Uh, number one, is that they found that when they decreased the amount of carbohydrates that someone was consuming in this one study, it actually decreased the amount, the amount of calories they were burning throughout the day and while sleeping, which kind of goes against this whole theory that, well, technically you should be burning more calories uh, throughout the day if you are reducing the amount of carbohydrates you're having. The other thing they found was that in a ketogenic study was that the body burnt about an extra 57 calories per day. However, over time, that amount dissipated. So basically it went from 57 and then it just slowly started to go down because the human body, funny thing, it adapts. Um, and this makes everyone kind of sad who believed in this because they projected closer to 500 to 600 calories per day being burnt because you were in a low carb or a ketogenic diet. Uh, folks like uh, Dr. Atkins would be very very upset by that. There are a couple arguments you can make about this. Uh, one being that, okay, um, but there have been some studies where they have seen an increase of, of calories burnt when someone is in this. And the thought behind this is we actually have to look at the amount of protein that someone is consuming. We have to look at something called the thermic effect of foods. So for every food that we ingest, whether it be a protein, a carbohydrate, or a fat, there is a certain amount of calories required for the body to actually digest that food. As it happens, protein happens to have the highest thermic effect, which means that it takes longer for the body to actually digest the food 
and also requires more calories for the body to digest the food. So it's kind of like a cheat code here. It takes us longer to digest. It helps us preserve muscle mass. It helps us build muscle mass. It helps us with recovery between training sessions. And it also keeps you full between meals because it takes longer to digest. So if someone has more protein within their diet because they have removed the amount of carbohydrates and increased the amount of their fat, well, of course, technically they would burn more calories because of the thermic effect of food. So we can understand that, right? So once again, protein has four calories per single gram. Carbs have four calories per single gram. And fat has nine calories per single gram. We need to keep that in the back of our mind. But then you might be saying, wait a minute, but what about, what about blood sugar spikes? Because we have to understand that if there are blood sugar spikes and that's connected to carbohydrates, that can lead to weight gain as well. That can lead to obesity. That can lead to diabetes. Really cool. I'm type 1 diabetic. I can tell you right now, my blood sugar goes up. I, I'm a pretty lean dude. Uh, my pancreas is no longer working. My body is delivered insulin from an insulin pump. I wear a CGM because I actually need to wear one, not because I'm a influencer. And the big thing you have to understand here, the glycemic index of foods basically is a scale from zero to 100. Zero being the lower end, being it's not going to spike your blood sugar as quickly after you eat it. Higher end being if you eat it, your blood sugar is going to spike right? So zero to 100. And the reason they came out with this originally was to help folks like me, diabetics, be able to determine what a specific food is going to do to our blood sugar and help us adjust how much insulin we are giving ourselves for that spike. Now, here's the funny thing. You have a working pancreas, hopefully. If not, I, I'm sorry. It sucks, doesn't it? But if you do have a working pancreas, your body does that work for you. It knows how much insulin to release. And no, when insulin is released, it does not cause you to hold on to fat. Case in point. How they actually measure the glycemic index, it would be someone would be fasted for, for a night. And then they would give them one individual serving of a specific carbohydrate. Now, the way they would determine what that carbohydrate would be would be about 50 grams, 50 grams of whatever that carbohydrate is. And the way they determine that would be carbohydrates minus fiber. So they would give you, they would give you net carbs. So 50 net carbs. Now it's, it, it, they don't look at actual serving size. They look at 50 net carbs. Now to do that is actually hard for some, it's easy for something like rice. It's hard for something like beets, right? If we look at it, like a, a cup of rice would be close to 50 50 grams of carbs, uh, uh, a cup of beets would not. You would need like four cups of beets, right? So we have to look at it that way. A actual amount that someone is going to be eating for something like the glycemic index doesn't match up with an actual serving size of what someone would be eating, um, which really kind of rules it out as something that we can use. We look at the glycemic index and we're like, oh, those, those high glycemic foods, they're going to they're gonna mess with me. They're going to cause me to gain weight. You're going to release a lot of insulin you're not wrong. Your body will release insulin to level that out. But it's not the higher glycemic index foods that actually mess us up. What it is, is eating foods that are highly palatable. I won't argue with that, right? Something like a Krispy Kreme donut is freaking delicious. And it's delicious not because it's a carbohydrate, but it's because it's a blend of carbohydrates and fats, which is very palatable so palatable, it's very likely you'll have more than one. And the food industry knows that. And you can be aware of that. And it depends on your relationship with food. Because if you know that, then you can be like, oh, well, okay, so I can't have donuts. I can't have uh, cookies. We, we tend to go towards the route. Most people say I can't have sugar. They usually just name sweets. But sugar isn't necessarily good or bad right? It's, it's, it just exists. It's a carbohydrate. Carbohydrates aren't bad. What it really boils down to is how many calories you're eating throughout the day, right? There are no good or bad calories. A calorie is just a unit of measurement. Eating over the amount of calories you need to sustain your weight, which would be a calorie surplus, or you're eating in a deficit where you're eating under the amount of calories you need to sustain your current weight, because that 
my friends, is the answer. The only way carbs will make you fat is if you are eating enough carbohydrates to put you in a calorie surplus. And it's hard to do that, actually, if you are eating like whole foods, if you are aware of portion sizes, right? If you have this healthier relationship with food. But when a specific food or food groups are demonized, it makes it that much more likely for someone to eliminate something from their nutrition and then have a rebound and then have a binge and then overdo it, which is the opposite of what we want. So I'm not going to say that you should eat cookies every single day. No, but what I am going to say is you have to be aware of what those specific foods are for you that you've, one, put as off limits forever, and two, have, have like tried to limit and, and have a comfortable relationship with. If we're unaware of those things, it becomes that much harder. A quick recap, the uh, carbohydrate insulin model of obesity doesn't actually hold true. It, it's been disproven many, many, many times over in different iterations. It's just that's not how it works. Um, specifically, when we look at the amount of calories that we burn throughout the day, no style of eating is going to make you burn more or less calories, specifically by avoiding a food group. Um, what you will have to manipulate is just total calories you're eating throughout the day. And we can also remember that if we are trying to lose weight, the most important macronutrient we can be eating is protein. Anywhere from like 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of goal body weight is going to put us in a nice range for total protein consumption. And that will help with hunger and fullness. That'll help with um, preserving muscle mass, building muscle mass as we exercise and recovery between training sessions. So it's an overall big win in that category. And we need to also consider that it's okay if your blood sugar goes up. Honestly, that's a completely normal thing. And because your pancreas does its job, your body will regulate itself. If we're spiking our blood sugar throughout the day, and I'm talking like dramatic spikes, like when you see influencers wearing their CGMs and you see their blood sugar going up to like 135 and they freak out, that's actually pretty damn normal. Like for me, if I have a blood sugar spike, my blood sugar could go up to 250 to 300, which is very dangerous, right? I'm very lucky that I take care of myself, I, I eat properly, I work out, I get my steps in, I eat a well-balanced diet, including all foods, not eliminating any foods, and I have an A1C of someone who does not have diabetes. My A1C is like 5.9. That's not a brag. It is to say that blood sugar spikes don't determine whether you are going to get diabetes, whether you are going to gain fat, whether you are unhealthy. What determines our health are so many other factors. And just because you have blood sugar spikes doesn't mean you can't lose weight. I'm gonna link to a video Jordan Syed did all about spiking his blood sugar for 30 days and he still managed to lose like 14 pounds. So that's what we also have to consider about that. And the final thing, the most important thing, is the only way you can lose weight is to be in a fucking calorie deficit. You can gain weight eating healthy foods. You can gain weight eating anything if you are in a calorie surplus, just like you can lose weight eating anything so long as you are in a calorie deficit. But the goal is to have a well-balanced diet, including fats, carbohydrates, proteins, plenty of fiber. All of these things are so important for overall well-being and a reduced all-cause mortality. So don't let your judgment be steered by what you might see on social media. I don't want you to do dumb things. I want you to be okay. I want you to enjoy carbohydrates. And the most important thing is I want you to realize that you are only one day away from being back on track and one day away from realizing how amazing you fucking are. Enjoy some coffee. Thanks for being here. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed, please make sure you subscribe so you get all the videos. Turn on the updates so you know when my latest videos come out. Follow me on social media. Click the links below to get some free stuff. That's the whole jazz. Now I want you to go. Have a good day. Eat some carbs.